Welcome back to the Coliseum. The A's have just taken the field behind their starting pitcher, Brett Anderson, tonight. Let's check out the game time weather brought to you by, as always, the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission is free and the boardwalk is open daily. A little cooler tonight, 61 degrees. And with the cloud cover, it's going to be one of those chilly nights at the ballpark as the evening wears on. Yankees lineup brought to you by McDonald's. Jeter, Damon Teixeira, Rodriguez, Matsui, Swisher, Cano, Cabrera and Jose Molina is the catcher tonight defensively for the Athletics. Sweeney Davis and Cust in the outfield tonight. Kennedy, Pennington, Ellis, Everidge on the infield. Landon Powell will catch. Kurt Suzuki is going to be the DH tonight. And Brett Anderson trying to even up that record at 8-8 eight and eight as he makes his 23rd start. So Anderson is ready. Derek Jeter steps in and we are underway. First pitch. A's won three to nothing on Monday night. Last night the Yankees won seven to two. So the ninth and final game between these two teams here in 2009. The Yankees have won six of the first eight. But a chance for a series win for the A's tonight. Jeter lines one foul. Big series for Derek Jeter. He is six for nine hitting out of that leadoff spot. Brett Anderson, third start against the Yankees this year. Overall, his 23rd start. His American League rookies in strikeouts with 103. And Fett said trying to get back to the 500 mark with his record. And said if you pick up a no decision, give up uh, and give up seven runs, that's doing something as he did against the Chicago White Sox. Bounced up the middle, and that's going to get through in the center field. So Jeter has his seventh hit in the series. Nothing more than a bouncer that got through the infield. It's a good fastball away, and Jeter, a pitch inside, he hits more to the right side. I mean, he stays inside the ball and shoots it to right field. But with a pitch outside, kind of rolled over a little bit. Unfortunately for the A's, it was up the middle instead of the shortstop. And Jeter takes off immediately, pitch a strike, throw way off line. It kicks away, but Ellis chases it down. So it'll be a stolen base for Derek Jeter. So Jeter not waiting around. He goes on the first pitch to Johnny Damon. And he swipes the bag. Well, Landon Powell had no chance as Brett Anderson lifted the leg. and But Landon Powell with a very quick release and a very, very alert play by Mark Ellis backing up Cliff Pennington. And Jeter with a head first slide popped up, but looked back and saw Mark Ellis taking the overthrow. So the Yankees quickly with a runner in scoring position. Damon tries to bunt, missed it, so the count one and two. And that says a lot about Lander. Uh, Brett Anderson, his ability to get lefties. And maybe a good breaking ball will get him here in a strikeout where he cannot advance Jeter. And Johnny Damon does his job. You see, he really rolled over on it. He gets Derek Jeter over to third. So one out. Running in the third position. Jeter at third, and it'll be Mark Teixeira. Well, that's the the problem with the breaking ball. If there's contact, you know the hitter's going to be able to roll over, and because if it's a slower pitch, but hoping for a much sharper break. Really, Brett Anderson had not had a chance to throw one just because it's so early in the game. Teixeira takes low. Teixeira is one for seven in the series. He has walked a couple times. His breakdown as a switch hitter, 321 as a right handed hitter this year, 267 as a left handed hitter. Overall, big numbers, 283 with 30 home runs. Good 2 0 pitch by Anderson, kept it right on the outside corner. 2 and 1 to Teixeira with Alex Rodriguez awaiting in the on deck circle. Look at the angle, Todd Tishner, the way he is set up behind the catcher, Landon Powell. And question with his setup, 
as to how much he's going to give the outside corner because you talk about an angle that he is looking at. Look at this. I mean, he is looking this way to try to figure out whether it's going to be a strike outside corner or not. Bouncer, and fair ball. Jeter's going to come in to score. To share is out, and the Yankees take a one nothing lead. Adam Kennedy, no doubt, thought about throwing to the plate, but had he thrown to Landon Powell, he would have been throwing it to the back of Derek Jeter. There's a great shot, and maybe he had a chance there, but this early in the game, you want to get the out. You don't want to take a chance of possibly opening up the big inning. He did look, but decided to get Mark Teixeira. So a couple of hitters putting the ball in play with weak ground balls, but it results in a run. RBI number 87 for Teixeira. Alex Rodriguez is one for five in the series. He has walked three times. His one hit, a single to right center. That was last night. Good breaking pitch, one and two. Well, I think we just figured out with Tom Tishner and his outside part of the play. In a case like this, you go as far as you can go. And I'm sure Chad Godin, working with uh, Jose Molina, will try to do the same thing. So really what you're saying is it doesn't mean he's going to call it a ball or a strike. It means he's probably going to be guessing because he's so far away. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it, it's so far in the angle, he is so far from the outside part of the play. And in the case, reputation is going to dictate, in a lot of cases, of whether it's a strike or a ball. Reputation of a hitter versus a pitcher, pitcher versus hitter, just depends on certain cases. So far, it looks like he is uh, going towards the pitcher, at least Brett Anderson in this case. Big bouncer to Kennedy, reaches down and grabs it. Side retired, a run for the Yankees in the top of the first, bottom of the first, coming up 1 0 New York. Top of the first, bottom of the first coming up. Let's take a look at the A's lineup brought to you by McDonald's. Kennedy Davis Ellis, Mark Ellis hitting third tonight. Kurt Suzuki is in the cleanup spot. He'll DH, and then it's Ryan Sweeney, Landon Powell, Jack Cuss, Tommy Average, and Cliff Pennington. So the middle of the A's lineup with some changes tonight. Kurt Suzuki's been holding down that third spot for a while, but he. Drops into the cleanup spot, and of course, Mark Ellis has probably been the A's best hitter over the last month or so, so he's going to hit in that third spot. Quick 0 2 to Adam Kennedy. Kennedy 282 with 10 home runs and 46 runs batted in.
Chad Godin. Look at Chad, 26 years old, so still a young guy. It has been a, a bit of a whirlwind for Chad Godin, as we talked about in the open of our show. Since the A's traded him to Chicago last year. He's been throwing a lot of sliders and took him five pitches to finally throw one. He's basically fastball slider change up. Worked out of the bullpen and in the rotation for the clubs he has pitched on. Very happy to be in the Yankee pinstripes though. Road grays. Because as he said, you don't think about what you want to do as whether it's a starting pitcher, a bullpen, reliever, whatever. You want to do what's best for the team. And that's we all know that the Yankees start the season to play in October and to win it all. They don't play just for the regular season. Derek Jeter did not know what it was like to go home in October last year. First time in his career that he did not play in postseason. Good effort by a fan. From the second row. Another one two to Adam Kennedy. Rajay Davis will be next. So the path to the Yankees rotation for Chad Godin. He went to spring training with the Cubs. Got released on April 5th. Signed with the Padres. A week and a half later. Went to their triple A team in Portland. That one's going to be a base hit for Adam Kennedy. We'll tell you how the rest of the this season has gone for Chad Godin travel wise. Defensively for the Yankees, Damon Cabrera and Swisher in the outfield. Rodriguez, Jeter, Cano to share on the infield. Jose Molina is the catcher tonight. Chad Godin is the pitcher. Talking to Derek Jeter is Adam Kennedy with a nine pitch at bat for Chad Godin. His 23rd appearance, 20th start, of course, first for the New York Yankees. Saw him with San Diego and had a, a full beard. Saw him with the Yankees on Monday and clean shape. Rajay Davis, 293 with a couple of home runs. Good lead at first. So Chad Godin signs with the Padres, two starts in Triple A. Then he's in the big leagues with San Diego, and he made 19 starts for the Padres. And then the Yankees acquired him on August 6th for a player to be named later. So he's made a few stops since the A's traded him to Chicago. It's his sixth major league team. All started with the Rays. And just 26. And he's not left handed. <laughs> the 2007 season for Chad Godin. He did a pretty good job for the Athletics. He won 11 games, made 34 starts, 199 innings. And had a chance for the 200th inning. Yeah, could his last get there. 3 0 pitch inside, and the first two runners are aboard for the A's here in the bottom of the first. Well, Adam Kennedy did his job, and of course, Adam facing CC Sabathia last Adam night. He struck out four pitches. times, but tonight, nine pitches. 14, I guess Chad did go down before he finally singled the center.
First pitch to Mark Ellis is inside. So Molina's going to jog out and talk to Godin. Now Kennedy and Davis both good speed, especially with Rajay Davis. The first pitch to Mark Ellis, neither of them were really being held on at all. I mean, obviously Rajay Davis not being held on, but he, Jeter and Cano not doing much to keep Kennedy on second. Rajay can get a big lead off yeah. first if Kennedy happens to run. I mean, they could both get huge jumps if uh, Garen wanted to put some type of play on the runners moving. One and one the count to Ellis. Bounced over the mound. Jeter charges. He'll get an out at second base. So it will be first and third and one out. But Derek Jeter thinking maybe Make sure to get the lead runner at second base. Keep the double play in order because if he goes to first base, it is a second, third situation for the A's. Now, first and third, the A's have a chance with Kurt Suzuki hitting fourth. How about that? Right, two pretty good hitters hitting very well in Mark Ellis and Kurt Suzuki. Suzuki, 10 homers and 55 runs batted in. Hitting 277 on the year. Off the end of the bat, there was that slider from Godin. CC Sabathia with the first pitch to well, the Suzuki. Actually, this was in New York, a three run home run, first start. That was a Yankee Stadium in April. Suzuki got him again last night. That's right, they did review that one, didn't they? CC was talking to him tonight and said, you know, it's one thing if you brush a guy back, but a fastball? And he said, yeah, when I looked down, I saw the fastball, I said, why am I doing this? <laughs> he said, I should have thrown a curveball or a slider, something other than fastball, because every pitcher knows that if it brushed back somebody, that next pitch, hitter's going to be swinging as hard as he can. And Zook did it. Or if you're going to throw a fastball, throw a BP fastball. Oh, yeah, do something because Suzuki, as we saw, just said, I'm going to swing as hard as I can. And as it turned out, he got the fastball and he crushed it. Kurt Suzuki swings and misses on a pitch that was way out of the strike zone. So that's the second out. So Suzuki cannot get the runner from third home. Well, this is a ball when it left Godin's hand, but Suzuki swung like he knew it was, but could not hold up. That ball way outside. But a slider that Chad Godin likes to throw to lefties, to righties, and especially to righties. It's that kind of a delivery where it's a little deceptive to pick up the pitch. Sweeney takes a fastball for a strike. Sweeney 274 with five homers and 34 runs batted in. One for six in the series against the Yankees. Well, he like Adam Kennedy, happy to not be facing CC Sabathia tonight. And Sweeney was saying the slider that Sabathia was throwing said just unhittable from the left-hander standpoint. Did get a base hit on a fastball, but. No chance if you're lefty facing Sabathia. Win number 14 for CC Sabathia last night. CC had a good morning, he said, in his uh, elementary school that he went through at Loma Vista Elementary in Vallejo. 
Good turnout, great time, and I'm sure all the kids were very excited to see the big mom. Yeah. One two pitch outside. The win for Sabathia last night ties him with Adam Wainwright and Josh Beckett for the major league lead in wins. Those three guys all have 14. Six or seven guys with 13 wins. Adam Wainwright is pitching tonight against the Dodgers, so he will try to become Major League Baseball's first 15. As Joe Girardi about taking CC Sabathia out last night and with the lead and possibility because of the pitch count, he said, any off day, CC Sabathia staying on regular five, fifth day. So he's not going to miss a turn, and Joe said it, give him an extra inning, a few extra pitches, then that's going to help him in the long run. That's why there's so few complete games anymore. Sweeney hits one hard, but right at Nick Swisher in right field. He takes care of it. A's have a chance against Godin, but cannot capitalize. One nothing Yankees after one. Baseball on Comcast Sports Set California is brought to you by Carl's Jr. The teriyaki $6 burger with grilled pineapple is back at Carl's Jr. Ace fan, Yankees fan, talking baseball. Those guys have been have talked a lot of baseball over their awesome. lives. Kids with the gloves, the sweatshirts on. These kids don't get cold. I don't think they ever <laughs> know what it's like to be cold. That's a good call. Rajay Davis racing back and Rajay Davis jumps up at the last minute makes the catch. So a hard hit ball by Hideki Matsui but Davis grabs it. What a way here in the second. Good swing by Matsui not wasting any time. Matsui Cabrera and Jeter all home and against Brett Anderson in New York on the 22nd of April. Ajay, though, being able to catch up to this one. If you have bad knees and you're a hitter, your foundation is not that great, then you always wonder when you hit a ball, man, if my knees or my legs were good, would it have gone out? Two forty two average for Swisher. He is three for nine in this series. He was two for nine when he went to bed last night, but he got to the ball park right. today and found out that he was three for nine. The ball that he hit that Nomar Garcia Parra dove for and it rolled away was originally an air on Garcia Parra, which we weren't sure that that was a great call, but it was changed today. So 
Swisher gets a hit. And the A's last night did not make four errors. They then made three. Swing and a miss as Brent Anderson takes a lot off and Swisher misses it. First strikeout for Anderson. Well, the hard slider. This is an important pitch for Brent Anderson. Back foot to the right hander. And he got the strike out his first of the game. Hey, who's that guy? Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson. Good seats tonight, as he should. Well, Ricky should be able to sit wherever he wants. And he probably does. <laughs> Walks around here, talks to players on both teams, because he great. played for both teams, yeah. the Yankees and the Athletics. So on base leader for both clubs, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Time. Robinson Cano is the hitter. Another Hall of Famer who is uh, has his number retired, number nine up in left field, Reggie Jackson. Has been in town with the Yankees, had a chance to visit with my former teammate, and looking great as always. And he... there it was, Ricky Henderson in his glory on the red carpet. August 1st, number retired, number 24. So, what did Reggie have to say? Reggie brought a bat in. You know, we, we talk about the size of the bats that players use today. He brought in a bat that he used was 39 ounces. Wow. And it was a long. Actually, Matt Weiss had it, took it over to the home side and weighed it. They have a little weighing 43 ounces because of the moisture in the bat. Reggie has oh. had it in his home and brought it in and just kind of wanted to let the guys see what real wood looks like. Amazing. And this was one that he used back in his playing day, and it's been a while, and it's still looking in great shape because it's great wood. It's like a log. Yeah. 39 ounces. 39 right? ounces, and he swung it just like these guys swing 30 ounce bats. <laughs> and as he said, he swung when he's 40 years old. There's Reggie. And A Rod, of course, passed Reggie and Harmon Killebrew yeah. in the all time home run list. Brett Anderson strikes out Robinson Cano, so back to back strikeout Swisher and Cano. Bottom of the second coming up, Yankees one and the A's nothing. We'll be here this Sunday, August 23rd, when the A's take on the Detroit Tigers. 7,500 kids, 14 and under, will get an A's back-to-school backpack. It's brought to you by Ross, Dress for Less. Tickets are on sale now at OaklandAthletics.com or by phone at 877-493-BALL. Landon Powell leading it off for the A's in the bottom of the second inning. Powell, Tust, and Everidge. A's hit first and third and one out in the first inning and could not score. 
Landon Powell getting a start behind the plate tonight. His 21st start behind the dish. And his first since the day game in Baltimore, yeah. which was a week ago today. Hit a home run. Hit a home run, and uh, his grandparents were there, seeing him play for the first time. And a whole bunch of family members drove in to watch him play. And had a big caught stealing. That's why Mark Ake is out at second base on a trailing runner with Robert Steele in third. So, again, every time Landon Powell plays, he always impresses us you know, with his contributions. And he hits this one high down the right field line, headed for the Yankees' bullpen. Over their bullpen, deep into the seats. A little too quick on what was a 89 mile hour fastball. Though Dan will hit his fastball in the low 90s. But at a time when a hitter is looking for the true fastball, as you mentioned, kind of a BP fastball, maybe not the true, you want to try to blow it by the hitter, take a little bit off in this case, how it was out in front. Anytime a pitcher shakes on a 3 2 count, he may be shaking to a breaking ball. He likes a slider. Change it. Yep, and a good one. Powell strikes out. Well, Chad Godin in an A's uniform at Yankee Stadium against the New York Yankees, and he did a very good job. Excellent. As a matter of fact, on June the 30th, up the ladder to Jorge Posada, and Alex Rodriguez striking him out. We're in the hard tops. How about that? A one hitter. Chad Godin. And, you know, it's amazing how he has been able throughout his career to adapt to different things, whether in the rotation, using the slide step, quick in his delivery, doing various things, but he's been able to make those adjustments very quickly. And you wonder, too, Ray, even though it was a couple of years ago, Yankees yeah. front office, they may remember that. That's right. They remember he pitched well at Yankee Stadium. I mean, it's a different stadium, but you could certainly make an impression on another organization, even if it's a couple years later. One and one to Jack Cuss. Cuss playing right field tonight. See the struggles for Cust. A 169 average without an RBI in his last 23 games. There's the outside fastball and Todd Tischner with the left-handed hitter. Jim Scanlon that, that vantage point he has from the end of the dugout. Kind of a different angle he likes to look at the hitters. See where Todd Tischner set up to the right shoulder, the left-handed batter. Still that angle to the outside. You know what's interesting about Jim Scalen Ray is the angle he has, obviously from the dugout. That's the same angle he likes to take when he watches yeah. batting practice. Exactly. He will not stand behind the cage the whole time. He will get off to the side. Strike three. There make is. that strike two, three and two on the outside corner. Take a look from the high home, our direct shot over home plate, and just see where this pitch was. What I thought exactly. See, that's the angle when the umpire has to look. He's more or less guessing where the strike or whether to strike or not. And inside with the 3 2 pitch, so a one out walk. Batting in the eighth position. First baseman, number 21. Tommy well, too, Ray, talking about the umpire, it almost looks like when showing that replay that his view <laughs> across yeah. is almost blocked by the catcher's helmet. Yeah. You see, he doesn't move. He's actually, in a sense, an umpire sets up as Tishner is doing tonight. He's really exposed himself. Most umpires want to get behind the catcher. Yeah. So if there's a foul ball, it's going to hit the catcher. He's going to block it. But the way he is set up, he doesn't move. He's got his whole body is there in case a ball comes mm -hmm. back. 
So now tell, now tell me if the catcher's head yeah. and helmet blocks right his view right of here. the outside corner. I think it does. But see how far this pitch is outside? That's the angle that the umpire is looking. And if it sets up like that, you're going to have the big angle. So one and two to Tommy Everidge. Everidge a home run last night against CC Sabathia. Solo shot. The A's got both their runs on home runs. Strike three call. That's the third strikeout for Chad Godin. First one looking. I'm sure Tommy Everidge thought it was low. It was a slider. Split the heart, but number 26. Jose Molina almost caught it on his knee as the as he caught the ball. Definitely is a strike from the standpoint of being on the plate. Again, it's the matter of the height that I think is a little bit low. Yeah. Two outs. Here's Cliff Pennington. Outside corner strike. Pennington, 283 with a homer and six RBIs. One for six in the series for the young shortstop. Swings at a pitch in the dirt. So Chad Godin with four strikeouts, three in the second inning. Third inning coming up. Yankees won. He's nothing. And Melky Cabrera to lead it off. Cabrera, Molina, and Jeter. 8 9 and 1. A couple of hits in the series for Cabrera and a couple of runs scored. On the ground to Cliff Pennington. He throws out Melky Cabrera for the first down. So that'll bring up Jose Molina. Catcher, number 26. Jose Molina. It's a good look at the great crowd tonight. A couple of nights off. The Yankees will have a day off tomorrow as they travel to Boston. And they will get in about 9 o'clock. Yeah, they're excited about that day off. 
But if they were going home, this would have been a day game today. Yep, but the in fact the Yankees will be on the road for their off day. Not at home, that's the difference in the rule. Talking to some of their announcers. They do leave out of the same terminal we leave out of here in Oakland. They yeah. stay over in San Francisco, but leave from nearby terminal by the airport here in Oakland. So you're going to get over there quick, but it's a six hour flight. You lose three hours. So there's your math. If you get off the ground by midnight, you get there at nine o'clock in the morning. 2 2 pitch right at the knee. Strike three call. Jose Molina doesn't like the call. And that's not the right guy to be talking to the home plate umpire because he's he's already gotten a few pitches as we have shown. And again, the umpire's on the inside the corner looking over the shoulder right down the barrel of the inside pitch. So Jose backed off thinking it was inside. And he might have been saying, give us the same pitch and politician can say I already have. <laughs> Jeter Singleton scored in the first inning. He also stole the base. He's five hits away now from 2,700 in his career. He's 27 hits away from becoming the all time hit leader in Yankee history. Amazing. How about that? Lou Garrett is who he's after. Garrett finished with 2,721 career hits. So. A shortened career, unfortunately. Yeah. So Jeter will, he will have that at some point in the next couple weeks. In fact, the way he's going, he's got seven hits in the series. That's games played. Now they always dreamed about being a Yankee, became a Yankee, and never wants to be anything but a Yankee. And I'd say there's a pretty good chance he'll be in a Yankee uniform his whole career. Contracts runs through 2010, right. is that correct? Yeah. So one more year. But you watch him when you think he's losing a step, that's when he picks it up, just like the stolen bases, 21 this year. Mark Ellis charges. And Brett Anderson has a three up, three down inning. Brett Anderson has retired nine in a row. Bottom of the third coming up, one nothing game. Tigers come to the Coliseum for a three-game series starting this Friday, August the 21st. Game time, 7.05 and 15,000 fans will get a Jason Chiamic collectible bobblehead. Brought to you by the San Jose Mercury News. Tickets online at OaklandAthletics.com or call 877-493-BALL. 
Try to hurry up through that uh, little spot there because we have Chef Rodney in, oh, in the booth. And uh, good old Chef Rodney <laughs> brought up some of his. What did you, you bring, Chef? Kobe, Kobe beef sliders and lobster sandwiches. Lobster sandwiches. Diamond level food, and Chef Rodney's got it all right here. They're, Chef Rodney, everybody, right here, and he is the man. He does it all, and uh, he has been very accommodating tonight. We appreciate it very much. Uh, Johnny Damon, by the way, made a great catch down the left field line, Rodney, and uh, just barely a snow cone. Did you bring any ice cream? No snow. Fifth inning ice cream? Yeah, that'd be perfect. That'd be perfect. Thank you. Great job. Diamond level, Chef Rodney, he's the man. You should sell cars, man, I'm telling you. Oh. Sliders, Kobe beef sliders, Kobe beef not sliders. just sliders. Marty's yeah. licking his chops. Grady's over here trying to be calm about it, but he can't wait to get going. Ken Cork peeking over here. Vince Catronio. <laughs> Well, diamond level, there's no doubt. You go down at the, at the diamond level right behind the home plate. That's the all you eat section. And uh, you come and enjoy baseball. <laughs> the guy's got to catch it. <laughs> it's uh, very difficult to concentrate on the game right yeah, now. Yeah. That's not true. Two and two. And well, just lull them to sleep a little bit and give the boys a chance to get it going. Sell out crowd tonight. Very exciting. Baseball here in the final game of the series. The A's have an off day tomorrow, but look at this crowd. This is great. Yeah. Two two to Rajay Davis, and he got a hanging slider. He fouled it straight back. The A's were expecting close to a sellout, or maybe even a sellout tonight, and there's not a lot of. Empty seats. Steve Finale said there's about a couple of thousand seats remaining. That uh, no doubt the walk up crowd would take care of them. Another strikeout for Chad Godan, and that is five so far in the ball. Now batting, second baseman. Well, he's moving Number the pitches. 14. That's for an inside Mark. fastball. That's the same pitch that uh, Jose Molina was complaining about when he struck out. And so he gets the call there, although, as we showed, it was a, a very good pitch thrown. I go down. Mark Ellis takes a bit inside. Ellis reached on a fielder's choice that was in the first inning. Broken bat. Jeter charges on the run, flips to first, and that will do it. So Chad Godan has pitched very well through the first. Three innings. Fourth inning coming up. Yankees one, A's nothing.
is not happy. She's saying, Dad, how can you talk to him? Head. He's got that NY thing on his hat. Well, we just want to confirm that if you've not had the opportunity to eat here at the Coliseum, Westside Club, or down to Diamond Level, please do. Oh, my gosh. We just this crab sandwich is <laughs> it, it, it's top three of anything I've ever yeah. had. And, and the, I mean that, too. And the Colby sliders. Not bad themselves. It's amazing how popular our booth gets. <laughs> I mean, we got people coming in here that just, hey, how are never, you guys doing? Never seen them before. Never seen them before. And all of a sudden, they're just friendly. And Johnny Damon lines on the left field. Sweeney has to get over there to cut it off. Now, we've talked about Kendra's barbecue, but uh, I think these Colby sliders and the crab sandwiches are be a little bit. Top Mark of the list tonight. Of course, if we ever got Kinder's barbecue sandwich, we I'm, might I almost, I mean, I, I had one at the golf tournament, <laughs> but I almost forgot what it tasted yeah, like. I know. Thank Brett you. Anderson in the stretch. He had retired nine in a row. But also out of the stretch with Johnny Damon. Paying attention to him because Derek Jeter in the first inning, first pitch out of the stretch. Jeter stole second very easily. Joe Girardi's team 75 and 45 overall. And as we've said before, the best record in baseball. That one's drilled to left, and you can forget about it. 3 0 Yankees. First for Teixeira. First pitch fastball tried to go in, and guess what? They missed location. Left at it over the no middle man. of the plate, and always a danger nice. when you try to go inside and you don't get it inside. And that's not if it's going, it's how far is it going. And he crushed it. So here's Alex Rodriguez. So Teixeira has all three RBIs tonight. And he has 89 now on the season. Well, as we said uh, earlier, that he has been rather quiet the first two games of the series. He has had some opportunities. Big double play that Ben Mazzaro got in, him to ground into last night. So he just had Carlos Pena with the uh, league leading home runs. And that is also the first home run the Yankees have hit in this series. And they, of course, lead the American League in home runs. 183 now on the season. Good curveball, and Alex Rodriguez swings and misses. Strikeout number four for Brett Anderson. We had the hard slider down and in. And going back to the Mark Teixeira at bat, remember they throw over the first base, Anderson with Damon, and you know what? What's the commitment to the plate has been made? That's where the full attention has to go and try to get a fastball inside was not successful, and it cost him with a two-run shot. Well, could they get to the franchise record of 242? A little work to do. This is game number 121 for the Yankees. Just a bit low, two and one. You mentioned, talked about that off day that they will have tomorrow. Amen. Three against the Red Sox. Nice play by Ellis at Fenway. Those two teams will play six more times this weekend and then three more at Yankee Stadium in September. Now batting, number 33, 
Well, that's been an interesting season series as well. Red Sox won the first eight, right? And then Yankees swept them in a four game series. So. But the AL East. Right now belongs to the Yankees. They have a. Six and a half game lead because the. Red Sox won their game tonight. Boston beat Toronto six to one. Want to know to Swisher who struck out swinging. Switch hitters. Home runs to share 169 and now tonight 170. Swisher on that list as well. There for a long time, Mark Teixeira had a tough time hitting home runs from the right side. But the way he swung in the fastball, he won't have many problems. It was crushed. Yeah, that was a couple years ago, right? He didn't hit one right-handed. And until the home uh, the home run or the All-Star game in Detroit. That's right. That's right. His first one yeah. was the All-Star game. Yeah. It's the opposite field, right center at America Park. Line drive, left center field. That's a base hit. Swisher with a two out single. Fourth hit in the series for Swisher. 28 straight games now. He has reached base safely, whether it be a base hit or a walk or a hit by pitch. So Robinson Cano steps in. Cano is 0 for 10 in this series. And still hitting over 300 at 314. He's a very aggressive hitter as he has shown in this series and throughout his career. He does not take a lot of pitches. Behind in the count, 0 and 2. <laughs> what a guy, huh? He reached over, got the ball, and I don't even know. Think he knows her? I hope so. He does now. <laughs> Swing and a miss on a ball in the dirt. Powell makes the tag. Side retired with Mark to share a home run number 31. The Yankees have a three nothing lead.
fined in kangaroo court. <laughs> what is that, and have you ever been fined when you play? Yes. It's a good question. Well, we started to talk about it, and uh, it, it's something that, that teams do. It, it's kind of a, a way of getting the team together, if you will, to uh, camaraderie, if you just just part of it. And what players do, coaches, managers, everybody's involved. You look for things that players do, not necessarily on the field, unless they're doing something to embarrass the team. <laughs> but, for example, one of the coaches for the Yankees was talking to Ty Waller during batting practice. And some of the players found out about it, so they said, all right, put him in the book, which means that that coach will be brought up in kangaroo court. They actually have a court. They have a couple of judges. And I know the experience that I've had where they're – couple of players or judges and let's say player says this coach was talking to the opposing coach for 15 minutes all right he's fine $25 mm -hmm. and of course all the money goes for a good cause it'd be a team party or some charity but it's just a way of uh, and then of course if the player or the coach says no I don't think so and they never win <laughs> so you can you can fight and it's double the case, but it's you're double. not going to win. You're not going to win. It's going to cost you more. But it, it's all in good fun. It's it's something that a lot of clubs do, and I was happy to hear the Yankees are doing because you know you perceive the Yankees as being kind of the the corporate team of America. But as Joe Girardi told me that whenever he played for the Yankees, and he said we did the same thing except now it's more visible. Uh, the you know guys doing interviews. AJ Burnett, I guess, is the one who's brought the shaving cream pie mm -hmm. to the guy being interviewed. We have had some players that have had that happen. So how often do they do kangaroo court? Once a week, once a month? Um, yeah, it's, it's usually set up during the homestand or you know, on the road maybe once a week. Uh, it, it varies. It's not every game, after every game. And you can imagine the Yankees as much as they're interviewed in the traveling press. I mean, you have to pick a time. Sweeney gets hit right in the foot. So the A's get a base runner the hard way. Hit by pitch. But it is all in good fun. And, and again, just to bring the club close together. That's why Brian Sweeney jumped enough that he hit him in the bottom of the Landon shoe. So, and it did. So not necessarily on the ankle bone. So Landon Powell steps in with Sweeney aboard. Joe Dan's first pitch to Powell runs outside. Powell struck out swinging in the first game. In fact, guys ever get mad, Kanger? Oh, big time. Really? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, you dispute it. I mean, you can fight it and fight it, and <laughs> it's when you have the whole team on you. I mean, they're. Yeah. Serious about it. It sounds like you're just better off saying. Guilty. Guilty. Let's find me. I'll Move on to the I'll, next I'll guy. Let's go. Yeah. I got fined a lot. I mean, just little things. That, right. Seems like a decent guy. But just little things, you know. <laughs> well, here's probably an example, right? Santiago Casilla. Where were we? Where he <laughs> wore the wrong jersey exactly. or something? I don't remember exactly. Well, it, it was we in uh, San Diego. San Diego. He right. had his practice jersey with no name on the back and when we saw Casey Chavez walk into the bullpen with Casillas number on That's his right. back I said what is he doing well Casey was letting him know that you forgot to put on your uniform Powell's so yeah out. that would have been a hefty fun so they're so yeah. they're gonna say Casilla Somebody's bringing you up for you had the wrong uniform. Or, or you didn't have you didn't have the, the your actual game uniform on. So Casey put his jersey on and actually was throwing with the outfielder and he said, Willie, he called to see you. Willie said, Where's your jersey? He said, I've got it. And he's, he's turning no, his back to it. it. <laughs> so that's an example of what yeah. would be a, a good fine. And that's a cost of it. I mean, if you forget to put your game yeah, uniform on. Probably. Yeah. And. Now, would it, would they do it? Would they find somebody for something that actually happened on the field during the game? Maybe you get, you get doubled off or 
you, you no, think there's no. two outs. Well, maybe forgetting how many outs, maybe, but but I think uh, with what happened to Milky Cabrera last night when he was hit and he stumbled over Suzuki. There you go. Good I call. mean, that's kind of maybe embarrassing the club a little bit. This went off to Todd Tishner, who's left shin guard. As Jose Molina. Molina brothers are usually very good. One of the group of brothers that they block balls better than anybody. Jose with the Yankees. And of course, Benji with the Giants. Yadier with the Cardinals. Yadier probably the best of all three, especially maybe because he's younger. But they also all have, it's probably not the conventional style, and it may not be the style you would teach a young catcher. But it works for But them. it does work for them. Two and zero oh with Sweeney now at third. He's trying to get on the board. Three and zero. Oh. Now we've talked about the Yankees and how they made some serious adjustments against Ben Mazzaro in New York. Well, the A's tonight, knowing that Chad Godin throws a lot of sliders, and we're seeing it to Jack Cust. He got a three-two sliders last at bat and walked, seeing several in this at bat already. All out of the strike zone. And the walk to Jack Cust. So that's the second time that Custis walked. So it's a pretty good story, though. The Molina brothers, three of them, all major league catchers. Of course, Benji has had a terrific career. He's the oldest, I believe. But there's people that will tell you that Yadier may be the best catcher in the National League. Exactly. And all three might have a chance to be in postseason. Yeah, maybe. Jose Molina was with. The Angels and then got traded to the Yankees a couple years ago. Right, the two brothers were together. Benji That's right. And yeah. Jose with the Angels, Mike Sosha. And they also, like, Benji obviously has a World Series ring with the Angels, and Yadier has one with the Cardinals. And unfortunately, they lost their father. Yep. In the offseason passed away and I know very saddened uh, for that to happen because you know, on these young guys that youth it's a nice play by Derek Cheater and the A's strand a pair in the bottom of the fourth fifth inning coming up Yankees three and the A's one. Three nothing Yankees, top of the fifth. We saw our own Kate Longworth working hard with interviews with Reggie Jackson and Ricky Henderson. How about that? Sit between those two guys, talk baseball. Awesome. One of them in the Hall of Fame with a Yankee cap, another with an A's cap. Yep. Reggie with the Yankees, of course. Ricky, as we saw on August the first and weekend prior to that, where he was inducted into the Hall of Fame, both in the first ballot, both both very deserved. So stick around after the game for A's post-game live.
you'll hear those interviews that are being done right now as the game goes on. So nice job by Kate Longworth. It's Melky Cabrera, Jose Molina, and Derek Jeter here in the fifth inning. Cabrera was just able to check his swing, and that's a leadoff walk. Number 26, Jose Molina. So the first walk issued by Brett Anderson. He has five strikeouts. And here's Jose Molina. Molina struck out looking in the third inning. I see a sacrifice coming from Jose Molina. Trying to get a runner in score position at the top of the batting order. Cabrera does have six steals. Bounced over the mound. And Pennington's going to take it himself. Plenty of time, and that's a double play. That's a shock, but I'm glad he did it. And Yadier might be fast, but we know Jose and Benji don't run that well. Yeah, so Yadier, he may be the fastest of the three. Two, I don't know if that's saying anything. Derek Pennington Jeter. could have thrown the ball. You don't even see Jose in the picture. Everett's could have thrown it back to Pennington, back to first base, and probably still got me. <laughs> so the double play. <laughs> you just, so the guys are not blessed with speed, and, and they don't try. They to don't try, and they don't care about it. it is. Never take away what Benji does with his bat. Jeter slices one to right field, and that's a base hit, and it bounces off a cusp, but he scrambles after it. So another hit for Derek Jeter. He is hot, folks. Wow. Number 18. That's why I was surprised that Jose Molina was not bunny. Unless they thought. Derek Jeter would have been intentionally walked, which he might have been, since he is so hot. Well, got on Jack Cusberry quickly. So Derek Jeter is two for three tonight. He has 13 hits. Listen to this: 13 hits in his last 19 at bats. So he has got the magic wand going right now. One for two tonight for Johnny Damon. Singleton scored in the fourth. He scored on the Teixeira home run. And now one and two. Damon having the big power season. 22 home runs. He's going to do it. Do it in your free agent season. He will be a free agent following this year, and he is wanted to continue to play. The most home runs Damon has hit in a season was 24. That was 2006, also with the Yankees. You know, he's not a center fielder anymore. I think left field is clearly his best spot, but he can still hit. Yeah. That's a heck of a note there. 600 plus hits, three different teams. Third player to do that. One gentleman, we will a killer. Johnny Damon will turn 36 years old in November. It's going to be interesting to see if he's back with the Yankees. Well, one of the rare players that played for the Boston Red Sox for about five years and then went to the Yankees. You don't often see a lot of players switch teams like that. Left center, that'll drop for a hit. 
So Johnny Damon is two for three. And now Teixeira will hit. High fastball. And did not go back to the breaking pitch. Stayed with the hitter. And Johnny Damon, uh -huh. as hitters will do, if they're facing a tough lefty, they see a fastball, they'll go out of the strike zone. And Johnny Damon did exactly that to get the base hit and bring up the hot man to share. Curve ball and that's a strike. Landon Powell as you did uh, last Wednesday. A week ago in Baltimore, given a sign that if both runners take off, he is telling them where he's going to throw. Well, this was last uh, Mark Teixeira with the fastball, his last at bat. First pitch fastball and first pitch home run hitting. Signed a big contract, and I'd say he's paying great dividends. Yep. The money they paid him, linked to the contract. And that's high, one and two. We're coming into tonight, Justin Morneau leading the American League in RBIs with 94, Longoria with 88, Teixeira with 86. And Teixeira has three tonight. So he closes the gap on Morneau. Lines that one. Davis coming in. Rajay Davis makes the sliding catch. So the Yankees do not score. They had three base runners but couldn't get anybody across. Bottom of the fifth. Coming up. Three nothing New York. Junior in your face and Rajay Davis this might have saved a couple of runs if ball had it dropped and gotten past him there's no telling how far to share would have gone it was driven in too but Rajay Davis a very good play to Rob to he knew it took a couple away from to and an excellent play by Rajay Davis let's see if that can help the A's get their offense going and get on the board against their former teammate to some of them anyway, Chad Godin. Cliff Pennington steps in. Godin with two walks, make it three walks and five strikeouts. These have just one hit, and that was the first batter that Godin faced, Adam Kennedy. I remember the ace 
scored their two runs on the two home runs last night in the first inning and the second inning. So they went the final seven innings last night without scoring a run. And they've gone the first four innings tonight without getting on the board. Real pitch to Pennington is in first strike. Another strike. So the count full at three two. Pitch is low and a leadoff walk for Pennington. So that is walk number four issued by Chad Godin. Yes. Chef Rodney said he was going to come back in the fifth Nine, inning with some ice cream. Number 29, well, Adam that's Kate Hudson, but we have much more important things to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tommy, if you want to turn the camera around here, we'll show you what Chef Rodney brought us in for the uh, dessert. I mean, this this is from the diamond level. It's pretty good eating. <laughs> and the best part about it, it's in the A's plastic helmet. Yeah. Oh. Check it out. Banana split. <laughs> and I think he brought about five or six up, one for each. And thanks again, Chef Rodney. You know, I don't think the radio guys got it. Should probably see if we can get the radio guys a couple of those. By the way, who were they showing down on the field? Who was that? Kate Hudson. Who famous that? actress. Girlfriend of Alex Rodriguez. Nothing against Kate Hudson. She's a very talented young lady, but this ice this ice cream that's sitting in front of me is pretty interesting. So that's Goldie Hawn's daughter? It is Goldie Hawn's daughter. Yes, it is. Well, Chad Godin's pitch count getting up as he is uh, at 80 pitches in the fifth inning in a well rested bullpen for Joe Girardi. Robertson pitched the ninth last night after. CC Sabathia went eight last night. And that followed AJ Burnett's eight innings on Monday. And a day off tomorrow, so they're ready to go down there in the bullpen. That means, I don't know, Mariano Rivera doesn't do two innings anymore. The walks and strikeouts, and as a result, pitch count up for Chad Godin. Kennedy a base hit and a foul out to left field. Johnny Damon made a nice play right in front of the seats. Could have at least dropped it so Chef Rodney could have just delivered the food and not have yeah. not be interrupted by a great play by Johnny Damon. It was a very good one. That pitch drops low. Two and two. So the A's are. Making Chad go down work at least now they just got him through on the scoreboard. Kennedy saw nine pitches in his first at bat against Chad Godin. Sort of the first pitch in his second and now seventh in this at bat. Slice to left field. Damon back and over and he makes the catch for the first half. Wow. Talk about playing a guy perfectly. Yeah. Johnny David about 15 yards off the line. 
left field. He's playing him like an extreme Center cool hitter and playing the same for Rajay Davis. Davis. Davis a walk and a strikeout tonight. Pennington has a pretty good lead at first. All the games are final in the National League now. The Twins just defeated the Texas Rangers 5 to 4. So with Boston winning, Texas losing, the Red Sox grab the one game lead in that wild card race in the AL. Jeter has it behind second, and Cano cannot catch it, and everybody's safe. And did he try to catch it with his bare hand? Derek Jeter ranging far to his left. Could not really tell, but Cano dropped the ball. Yeah, kind of in between using his glove and bare handing it. Maybe the throw just to his right could not get his glove over quickly enough. That almost looked like the play Jeter made at home plate. That backhanded flip. Quick flip, too. Maybe too quick. It's going to be an error on Robinson Cano. So that's the first error in the series by the Yankees. So first and second, one out. Another shot for the A's. They've stranded five through the first four innings. In the dirt clock by Molina. Rolls past him. So he got a glove on it. Runners cannot advance. Well, sometimes a runner, in this case Pennington, might have been blocked by the pitcher, could have been blocked by the umpire, and not really able to determine where the ball was. Rajay Davis a better look from first base. He was ready to head to second. But he had to watch the runner in front of him. Well, you got great speed on the bases with Pennington at second, Davis at first. So a great sight to see would be a ball in the gap here. Watch the guys run. Three and zero. Kurt Suzuki in the on deck circle. You know, Bob Guerin has the stopwatch. You don't need it to see that Chad Godin has a a slow move to the plate. No. High leg kick. Which you don't like to really see from a pitcher because the jump the, the runners can get, but nobody's attempting it tonight. And there's the walk. So the A's have not had a hit in this sitting, but they have the bases loaded and one out. And Joe Girardi is going to make the change. Five walks by Godin. He's going to do it in four plus inning. So a big time chance for the Athletics. As Alfredo Seves comes in, Chad Godin is out. Base is loaded, one out. Yankees with a 3 0 lead.
Well, if you recall the game in New York on the 25th of July, a game in which Gil Gonzalez was on the mound, Andy Pettit started for the Yankees. And a 6 1 seventh inning for the A's helped them win the game. Final score of 6 to 4, but Asimus came in. Asimus. He struggled, didn't he? Big he did time. struggle. Landon Powell with a big hit to left field with two strikes, two outs. And that six run inning, and that opened it up for. He got the 0 2 fastball up, remember, against him. It hit the left field. And then Cabrera, following Kennedy's RBI single, Cabrera with a two run double. So a big inning for the A's. They'd like to do the same tonight. Back to the pitcher, and that is going to be a one, two, three double play. So a Sevis gets out of it, and the A's do not score. One, two, three, double play once, but in the same series, the first game and now the third game. This one, the A's having the tables turned. They got out of the situation with a one, two, three, double play with Brett Tomko on Monday. But tonight, the A's with their opportunity, found into the same double play. Rodriguez pops it up. A long run for Cust, and Cust catches it and then goes into a half slide, but the out is made. Ray, I want to ask you a question about the play at home on the force. The runner is allowed to slide into the catcher right. and take him out just like you would with the second baseman at second base. Exactly right. And Molina, right foot on the plate. He wants to catch the ball, push off, get an angle. And where's the runner? Can't go out that, that far. And that's the whole key for the catcher to get the ball quickly enough to clear himself to the point that you cannot run out of the base path that far to try to break up a double play. So he is the pivot man on the double play. Yeah, exactly. The catcher. If he is actually Monday night because Suzuki had to reach for the ball, high throw from Tomko, that would have been a good time to essentially cut the legs out sure. from under. Yeah. And, you know, might have thrown the ball down the right field line. Don't see it happen often. Well, I don't think and, and catchers. I don't think they're crazy about it, but it is yeah. a good play if you're the runner. And unfortunately, in, in the case of a catcher, it's going to be blindsided. He, yeah. He's not going to be able to see the runner coming in. So that's why Molina got the ball plenty of time and pushed himself out towards home, uh, the pitcher's mound, almost to the grass. Gives him a better angle also to throw down the line, although Monday. Suzuki said he was throwing right at 
Alex Rodriguez because he was running so far inside the base bat. That was if he could not get the ball to uh, first base with quickly enough. So two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Make sure you visit the A's page on CSNCalifornia.com to vote in tonight's poll. Which team do you think is the best team in the American League? Yankees, Tigers, Angels, Red Sox, Rangers. Look for your answers in tonight's A's post-game show. Rangers. It is the middle of August, so. Rangers just happen to be part of the equation. Yep. Yep, they made themselves a factor in the American League this year at the Texas Rangers. Obviously, we've seen all the teams. Record wise, the Yankees have the best record. I was watching some TV today, and there was a talking about the Angels. Hmm. The lineup they sent out tonight, which had their regular lineup in there. Every guy in the lineup was hitting 300 or better. Oh. Now, you think about that. And that is why the Angels are currently. Leading the American League in run score more than the Yankees. Pennington again near the bag at second, and that's a very nice inning for Brett Anderson. Bottom of the six coming up, it'll be Sweeney, Powell, and Cust. Love that little girl. She wants nothing to do with the Yankee fan. Three nothing, the Yankees over the A's in the rubber game of this series. And so far, it's been a frustrating night for the Athletics because they have had chances to score some runs. They have now stranded seven through the first five innings. Still just one hit, but all the base runners. They've had five walks. They've had a hit by pitch, and they've had an error. Maybe they've reached base on an error. So Sweeney Powell and Cust against Alfredo Aceves. Not uh, very many players wear the number 91. But if the Yankees continue to retire all their numbers, you're going to be seeing a lot of guys with high numbers. <laughs> That's a spring training number, and as soon as you make the club, you said, I want out of this number. Look at Kuzi Jinger and his uh, brother, who handled the visiting the home side, they probably say, We're out of numbers. Yeah. They're all retired. They're up on the center field. Nine, catcher, number 35, Landon. 
And here's Landon Powell. Landon Powell is 0 for 2. Struck out swinging in the second inning and then bounce back to the pitcher in the fourth. Powell switch hitter. Off the end of the bat. Jeter has it, and that's the second out. Gonna send along a big hello to Aaron Duran, big A's fan who uh, been a good friend of the A's and down in the Santa Cruz area and getting through the horrible fires down there. So he's said he's back in his home, but a lot of smoke in the area, and I think we're going to have it 100% uh, contained maybe by tomorrow. So we hope, hope that so. works out yeah. because it's been kind of tough for the folks down there. So a big hello to Aaron Duran, and hope things are going well. Big A's fan. Custis went very high, left center field. Cabrera near the wall. Go! Overs three to one. Take your time, Jack. It's been a while. July the 20th. In the game with the A's came from behind against the Minnesota Twins was the last. And this the high towering shot that we've been accustomed to seeing from Jack Cuss. He was looking, watching the center fielder Cabrera. Cabrera ran out of room. What was the first RBI since when? July, July 23rd. 23rd. Sacrifice yeah. fly against the Yankees. So that had to feel good for oh, Jack Cuss. He needed it. So July 20th to August the 19th. Cuss did three home runs in July. Six in the month of June. Well, and what's good about this shot is the fact that it did go to left center. And Jack joined the club in 07. We saw so many of his home runs go to left field, left center, center field. And a couple of walks and a home run for Jack Cut tonight. Right going, Jack. Line drive right at Robinson Cano side retired, but Custa home run is 17th of the year. So the A's are on the board. Seventh inning coming up. Yankees three and the A's one.
$25,000 in cash. It's each Friday through Sunday. Visit CashCreek.com for details. Seventh inning as Robinson Cano leads it off. Brett Anderson has pitched pretty well tonight. Mark Teixeira has been the guy that has done the damage with all three RBIs. Anderson with one walk and five strikeouts, and he's allowed six hits. Well, a couple of times tonight, the A's have had a runner third less than two outs and not been able to get him in. And the difference now being two runs, yep. that's the difference in the game. And those are the opportunities that you have to take advantage. And the Yankees did it in the first inning. They talk about a manufactured run. Base hit, stolen base. Damon got him over. Teixeira got him in. So a couple of ground ball outs in the inning, and the Yankees got the first run. So two and two to Cano, who has struck out twice swinging tonight. High fastball and Cano fights it off, stays alive. Closing in on 100 pitches is Brett Anderson. Is just one loss in his last 10 starts. And he gets the strikeout of Cano. Cano has struck out three times tonight. Last two on the hard slider in the dirt. Swing at the motion of Brett Anderson, the hard slider. Number 53. This is Sabathia last bat against the A's two lefties. Dominated. And Brett Anderson, at least against Cano tonight. But Johnny Damon has a couple of singles off of him. True left handed hitter. Cabrera. First pitch swinging. Mark Ellis has it. Two outs. So Jose Molina will hit. Number so now right at 100 Jose pitches. Molina. To right field. So that will do it. Seven consecutive hitters retired by Brett Anderson. Seventh inning stretch, three run Yankees. And at the home half of the seventh. A rapid rewind. Mark Teixeira in the fourth inning, home run number 31 on the year, a two run shot. That made it three to nothing. Chad Godin had some big outs in this game. Also, was a little wild with five walks, so he was out of the game in the fifth inning. But this is the biggest play in the game as Kurt.
double play. Jack Cust with a home run in the sixth. So three six and one for New York. One two and zero oh for the Athletics. So Aceves back to work. He's the one who came in and got the double play off the bat of Kurt Suzuki, and then in the sixth inning he gave up the home run to Cust. So Pennington, Kennedy, and Davis. Bottom of the seventh. A's trailing three to one. Change up from Seves outside one and one. Brian Bruni, hard throwing right hander, starts to loosen up. Came right back with the same pitch, and this time he gets a swing through from Pennington. On the left field line in the A's bullpen, it's Michael Wirtz. Good pitch there, and Pennington strikes out for the second time. Everything off speed to Pennington. The two curveballs, first and fourth pitches, and change ups in between. One thing a young player will have to learn how to do is hit the off speed pitch. First pitch to Kennedy on the outside corner. You know what's funny? It's noticeable about the last week. More off speed pitches to Pennington. Yeah, that's true. And he has struggled some. Yeah. You know, it's a matter of adjustment after adjustment. But hitters, when they come up, and you challenge them, they prove they get the fastball, then let's go to the next pitch. Yeah. And let's keep going down the ladder. Pretty good fastballs for A.J. Burnett. Of course, a great curveball. CC Zabathia last night. Everything working for him. A.J. Burnett gave up three runs in eight innings, complete game, and because of those two, Bullpen well rested tonight. So Adam Kennedy swings and misses. And that is seven strikeouts now by Yankees pitchers. Late breaking curveball, and Adam Kennedy waited and Number 11. decided to go to try to make contact Ron because it was a strike. Davis. That's a pretty good curveball. So Rajay Davis hits with two outs. Over Derek Jeter's head in the left field. So Rajay Davis reaches out, pokes a single. So Davis has been on base three times tonight with a base hit, a walk, and he reached out an air. So Rajay trying to surpass his total of stolen bases last year. It's at 25, so two, two outs. Mark Ellis got a chance to drive him off and gets him to score position, of course. Way Mark is driving the ball, hits the ball in a gap, you drive him in anyway. At least Mark being a right handed hitter can see Rajay if he takes off and let him try to steal it. The Bruni sits down, and now the left hander Phil Coke starts to lose it. Rajay trying to get the running lead off first base. Something is he told us the other night that he watched Brian Roberts do in Baltimore. Start taking off like that, and if Bruni or uh, Savas stopping, Davis goes throw to second base is just a little bit late. There is stolen base number 26 for Rajay Davis. Very quick release by Jose Molina, but Rajay kept inching off. Mark Ellis took the pitch. And Cano, don't you know, if he catches the ball on the back, see, he had to catch the ball out in front. If he's straddling the bag, you see it often, if he's straddling the bag, he just applies the tag. So Juno now to Mark Ellis. So Mark took the pitch, let the guy steal the base, give you an RBI opportunity.
fastball outside corner, two and one. Kurt Suzuki in the on deck circle. Ball foul back to a two. Brent Anderson pitched well enough again tonight to win a game. Fortunately, Mark to share with the three runs batted in and not much offense for his club. Seves is going to have a quick meeting with Molina. Here's the 2 2 to Ellis and another foul ball. He goes up the middle two with Cano at second, Jeter at short. They're holding the position. No one is even thinking about holding Roger Davis at second. There are two outs. The main thing here is for Davis not to distract Mark Ellis. Everybody exactly where their position, not moving. Rajay dancing around, so Seves. Spins around, but nobody was there to take a throw as Jeter and Cano never left their spots. Rajay, as he says, these situations, he doesn't care about the infielders, it's the pitcher he watches. Line drive down the right field line, the foul. I mentioned about distracting the hitter. The runner at second base starts dancing off second base. Then the hitter who is looking at the pitcher has base runner just beyond him. In this case with Mark Ellis at two strikes, he is just concentrating on trying to make contact, get a base hit. Not worried so much about Rajay if he's going to run or not. Another foul ball, so Mark Ellis hanging in there. Ellis tonight reached out of fielder's choice, grounded to short, and walked. Shot center field, that's a base hit. Davis racing around third, he will score 3 2. So a two out hit, stolen base. And then an Ellis RBI hit. Well, I think of beauty. Mark Ellis just kept fouling off. He fouled off three after he got two strikes. And then elevated fastball and a shot back up the middle. So great job for Mark Ellis by Mark Ellis taking the pitch, allowing Rajay Davis to steal second. And then able to drive in Rajay to make it a one run game. That's great baseball. That's what you yeah. like to see in baseball. Patience to the hitter and then work in the count and get in the big hit. And that's why if you're the hitter, let the base runner steal right. a base. Give him a couple pitches if you have. Absolutely. So Kurt Suzuki is the hitter. Mark Gallus a walk in his last at bat. The fifth walk given up by Godin. And now base hit in this big Part of the inning. Kurtz 0 for 3. Had a tough night at the plate. He had some chances to knock in runs. And 
checks his swing and fouls it. I think Kurt Suzuki, and he's talked about it before, he doesn't mind DHing, but I think he would prefer to be behind the plate. It changes everything. When you're in a position and you hit four to five times a game versus a DH, it's a whole different mindset. Prepare yourself. Field base hit. And now the tying run is in scoring position, and Joe Girardi's coming out. Three straight hits by the A's, and we're going to have a pitching change. So the lefty Phil Coke is coming in to face Ryan Sweeney. Three to two, Yankees. Time is game time. 6.05. Stick around afterwards for the post game fireworks show brought to you by Chevron. The tickets online at hopefullyathletics.com or you can call 877 493 ball. Fireworks Saturday following the Tigers A's game. Fireworks tonight as the A's trying to come back from a 3 0 deficit. Ryan Swinner to face Phil Coke who picked up the win against the A's. The trip to Ju uh, New York in July when he Gave up a two run home run to Mark Ellis. And then the Yankees came back against Dallas Braden, scored three, and he's the pitcher of record. 57th appearance for the left hander who features a fastball slider and changer. So he's been a busy guy out of the Yankees bullpen. The only lefty down there. First pitch to Sweeney is low. He's been throwing seemed like for 15 minutes, waiting to come in to pitch the eighth inning. Outside corner strike. Sweeney is 0 for 2. He was hit by a pitch. Grounds that one to second. Robinson Cano picks it up and that will do it. A run on three hits for the A's. We head to the eighth inning from the Coliseum. 3-2 Yankees.
Sportsnet Bay Area. Our full baseball recaps, A's and Giants. Practice. The Raiders and the 49ers are practicing against each other this week, and then they're going to play an exhibition game on the weekend. And, of course, you saw it earlier. Kate Longworth with Ricky Henderson and Reggie Jackson doing the interview during the game, and we will have that for you as well. That's all coming up tonight on Sportsnet Central, 1030 Sister Station, Comcast Sportsnet, the area. Good ball game tonight, 3-2, to two, the Yankees over the Athletics. As Michael Wirtz comes into the game. Sunday was the last time that Wirtz pitched. So he's had a couple of days off. Overall 56th appearance and a terrific year for Michael Wirtz out of the A's bullpen. Jeter, Damon, and Teixeira, the three scheduled hitters. So the 73 strikeouts by Michael Wirtz. Most of them swing and miss on pitches out of the strike zone. Opposite field home run. This was in Gio Gonzalez game. Playing with Gio. With six and two thirds, Michael Wirtz had to come in and get the final out in the seventh. That was in the eighth inning. We gave up the home run. That was at front row in Yankee yeah. Stadium. Jeter lays off the slider, and it was a good one. Two and two. A couple of singles tonight for Jeter. With six hits total, and the Athletics with five. There's been one error in the game. That was by the Yankees. Two two pitches foul to the right. Tommy Everett will race over to the seats, but run out of room. Swing and a miss. A fastball on the outside, and Derek Jeter strikes out. So Jeter two for four. Might have been thinking about another slider, and Michael Wirtz, who has a very good fastball, shows it here Number with 18, outside the corner. Jeter not able to make contact, which he normally does. Good fastball, my Michael. So Johnny Damon steps in and takes a strike. The Bailey and Wirtz tied now. Most strikeouts in the American League by a relief pitcher, 74. Damon, a couple of hits tonight. Both singles. He scored a run in the fourth inning. He has looming margins. Yep. Line drive. Davis coming in, and he's going to get there. Two outs. You play, play shallow. You rob a lot of hitters. Base hits. Line drive. Rajay didn't even have to die for that. Excellent jump. Looked like an easy. Base hit for Johnny Damon. Two outs for Teixeira. Uh, 
share a home run off works in that same game, did he not? Yes, he did. He's hung on to win the game. Fastball inside corner strike. So Wirtz went to the inside corner to get the strike and then tried the outside corner, but that one missed two and one. Phil Hughes is loose and ready to go out in the Yankees bullpen. To share a lines one down the right field line foul. Well, well this, this <laughs> yeah, this was that home run we just talked about. The, the one he just hit was just foul. This is a fastball inside that was fair. Too hard to hook in front of the foul pole. We say that often, but strong guys, those things happen. Sell out crowd. Yeah, the Yankees are great. The Yankees are great. Something like that. Well, it might be what the fans are saying, but they draw a lot of people. Yeah, they do. So, strike three call to Teixeira. He does not like the call at all, but a couple of strikeouts for Michael Wirtz. Bottom of the eighth coming up. 3 2 Yankees. Comcast Sportsnet California. It's where the A's are always on. Willie Adams. Wow. 1996 A's Classic game. So indeed, the A's are always on. Phil Hughes takes over. Hard throwing Phil Hughes. Former starter now in the setup role for Mariano Rivera. This through his 95 mile hour fastball. That makes seven starts, but see 34th appearance. He has been moved into the pen and doing a very good, very good job. 75 strikeouts, 24 walks. Well, different things develop over the course of the season, but Phil Hughes going to the bullpen and being very good. Has been a huge development for the Yankees. They were struggling for somebody to get to Mariano Rivera earlier in the year. 
but they think they have found their man in Phil Hughes. One and one to Landon Powell. Now two and one. Powell Custon Everidge. Bottom of the eighth. He's consistently 95, 96 miles an hour. Rivera just starting to stretch it out a little bit. So Powell works it count full. Powell a strikeout and a couple of ground outs in the ball game, so old for three. Right at him with the fastball. He just basically just throws it. Fastball and he'll throw a slider or a curveball. Kind of a slurve if you will. And there's a designated hitter going down to the bullpen to warm up a pitcher. Kurt Suzuki. Gamer. And then Ron Romanic grabs his mitt. <laughs> Just what Ron wants to do, I'm sure. Outside, and it's a leadoff walk for Powell here in the bottom of the eighth inning. That's walk number six that the A's have received. Well, there's a decision for Bob Guerin, and the only thing he can do with Landon Powell, who we know is not able to run fast. He runs hard, but he's not fast. Kurt Suzuki could go in. He's a DH. You just lose your DH. But your pitcher goes in that spot, and granted, you'd have two more guys that you could pinch in. But it's a question of it's going to be kind of a station to station for Landon Powell. Unless Jack Cuss just a trot. That would be a good another home run. That would be great. Well, win. there's a lot of different situations. The A's are playing with three bench players because right. they have an extra guy in the bullpen. Right. And the bench players are Garcia Parra, Crosby, who is not 100%, well, so and, and Hairston, who's yeah. really not 100% as far as running goes. Right. So it could make it a lot easier if Jack duplicated this shot as his first home run since July the 20th. At the A's on the board. Long time since he shook hands and gave high fives. There's a strike. One and one. Cuss thought it was outside. So cuts the home run and a pair of walks tonight. Bailey and Breslow loosening up for the A's down the third baseline. There again at 95. That's a good pitch by Hughes. One and two. Well, a little bit better pitch and more of a strike than maybe the previous pitch that was called a strike. Still outside and flirting with danger when you pitch Jack Cust away because of his power to the opposite field. Just off the plate, two and two. So Hughes staying right on that outside corner, but this one just off the plate. And there's your good call, and that pitch was called a strike earlier. That same location. Not too close to take. 
Oh, oh. He stepped off though. He stepped off the rubber before he threw. Bob Garrett is coming out, but you can see his right foot when he stepped off. Because if a runner is not being held at first, he can't throw. And I think if we show it, you'll see him step off the pitcher with his right foot, which then allows him to throw to first, even though Teixeira was not holding Landon Powell. Watch his right foot. Yeah, he stepped back. Stepped off the rubber. And then learned very quickly that he was not being held at first. So two and two. Good swing there by Cust. That's the same pitch that was called a ball, but Jack very wisely swinging at it because you don't want to take another chance. Curveball, base hit right field. So the A's are in business here in the eighth. First and second, nobody out. Somebody's going to pitch front for Landon Powell. It's going to be no more. Yeah. And you know, you can actually use a pitcher. Sure. You can use a pitcher that way, not have to give up a position player. So essentially, the pitcher is going to go in this spot in the lineup. Number but five, they are, there is some speed on. now. Second, Garcia, first and second, nobody out. But what an unbelievable swing by Jack Cust. Sees nothing but 95 mile an hour fastballs. The first breaking pitch he sees oh. is a base hit. So Bob Guerin giving up the DH by inserting a pitch runner for Landon Powell. And Zuki's going to have to go in. But I don't know. Is there a pitcher they could put in there? Would you be comfortable with? Think of anybody? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check. Well, Cahill. Well, you, you got to put somebody. I'm, ask, I'm asking. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Bizarro. Cahill. And Bizarro kind of, I think he's a good athlete. Yeah. I think yeah. he'd have it. But you still might have a situation where it's a uh, station to station with a pitcher. Yeah. yeah. Nomar got loose, but glad to see that happening because otherwise it was going to take two more singles to score nine to pound from second. So fans may be saying, well, what, what, what's going to happen when this spot comes up? Pitch you're going to pitch, pitch it. it. Yeah. yeah. And you still have Crosby and Hairston. Although so you be, I mean, you can extend the game quite yeah. a way. So, but you're hoping you can score two runs. You don't have to worry that's about. Right. It. That's right. Put it this way: the chance of the chance of a A's pitcher actually hitting in this game is very slim. Very slim. Yeah. Exactly. Very. Unless it goes well, 14 innings. Yeah. Nobody. Let's think of that way right now if the A's can score these two. Average bounces one. Rodriguez steps on the bag, throws to first, the throws low, and Teixeira made the play. Wow. 5 3 on the double play, and that one hurt. Uh, too close to third for Alex to go to third, and then probably did this intentionally. Now Bounced it far enough out in front of Mark Teixeira. And some third baseman will do it. Got it through a sidearm. Bounced it out far enough. And Teixeira able to handle the easy hop. Maybe easier for A-Rod to throw that way and bounce the ball instead of trying to airmail. So not exactly what the A's were hoping for. So two outs. Here's Pennington. Now the tying run is still... In scoring position, and that's Cust at second base. So Pennington a chance to tie this baby up if he can get himself a base hit. First pitch strike. Pennington 0 for 2, couple of strikeouts and a walk.
curveball. Pop to left. Damon has it. Side retired. A strand, their 10th runner of the game. Still 3 2 Yankees. California is brought to you by Carl's Jr., the teriyaki $6 burger with grilled pineapple is back at Carl's Jr. Nomar Garcia Parra is now in the game at first base. Kurt Suzuki is now the catcher. There's Kurt, so it goes from DH to catching. And Craig Breslow is on the mound. Number 13, Alex. So Craig Breslow comes in here in the top of the ninth inning. First pitch to Alex Rodriguez is high. A high strike, I should say. 0 and 1. Rodriguez is 0 for 3 tonight, and he is 1 for 8 in the series. Michael Works goes one inning. It's a couple of strikeouts after Brett Anderson's seven innings. Saw a couple of pitchers tonight in the mid 50s in appearances, but yet Craig Breslow making number 61, still leading the American League, is Mariano Rivera, the man you never want to see getting loose. Point two to Rodriguez. High fastball, Rodriguez swings and misses. So an 0 for 4 night for Alex Rodriguez. The one out here in the top of the ninth. Well, tune into our sister station, Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area, for Chronicle Live, hosted by Greg Papa. That's tonight at 11 o'clock. Jim Plunkett, Jamarcus Russell. Vernon Davis. So that's a good lineup. Heavy football lineup. So Jim Plunkett, former Raider quarterback and current Raider quarterback, Jamarcus Russell. Kennedy near the coach's box. He has it. And that's the second out here in the bottom of the or the top of the ninth. I was thinking ahead to the bottom of the ninth where the A's will have top their order up against Mariano Rivera. I hate to see this night end with the A's not winning the game because it really has been a frustrating game so far. The A's have had a lot of chances but have not been able to really get the big hit except for Mark Ellis's. 
two out RBI single. Nick Swisher one for three. And Mark will hit third in the bottom of the ninth inning. Playable for Ajay Davis. He goes back now in a step or two. And that will do it. Here we go, folks. Bottom of the ninth inning. It's a 3-2 game. Rivera coming in. And the A's will have the top of their order. On Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Please drink responsibly. Yankees three and the A's two. Bottom of the ninth inning. A sellout crowd tonight. 35,067. 3 5 0 oh, 6 7. So a terrific crowd. They've been into it pretty much all night. Let's see if it can end on a high note. Won't be easy though. Mariano Rivera comes in the game. He'll be looking for his 36th save of the year. He has blown just one save. And in his career, 517 saves. So Rivera comes on the pitch. He is the fifth pitcher of the night for the Yankees. So Adam Kennedy is ready. First pitch in for a strike, 91 miles an hour. Cut fastball, cut fastball, cut fastball. Kennedy had a base hit in his first at bat. Got a foul out to left field, a fly ball to left field, and a strikeout. Nick Swisher chases the ball down way out in right center, throws it into the stands. You will have a hard time finding up a finding a negative statistic. There are not too many. Popped up. Rodriguez looks like he's going to have a play. He does, and that's the first down. Well, we need a manufactured run, right? Uh, base hit. This was in the seventh inning, and he stole second. And then Mark Ellis, a base hit up the middle, and Rajay Davis scored the second run of the game for the A's. And the A's trying to duplicate that now for Rajay to get on and make something happen. Davis got a fastball there, followed it back. That was the pitch to do. Rajay's been on base three times tonight. Single a walk and he reached out an air. 
just a bit low. They missed by much. A front door cut fastball that a couple years ago Marco Scudero took down the left field line and cutter that he can work both sides of the plate. Alex Rodriguez evil to bag guarding the line. No extra bases. Jeter on the backhand throws just in time to get Davis two outs. Well, Derek Jeter had to rush his throw because of the speed of Rajay Davis and it stretched by Mark Teixeira. Ball did not hit the ground. So now it's Mark Ellis' job to get on board somehow. First pitch is low. Mark tonight is one for three with the RBI single. He got that off of Aceves, and that was in the seventh inning. Pop up right field with Swishers there, and Mariano Rivera a three up, three down ninth inning, and the Yankees hang on and win it tonight by a final score of three to two. And the Yankees take the series two games to one here in Oakland. And they take the season series seven to two over the athletics. So the A's will have a